A lot of people have switched out traditional cigarettes in favor of electronic ones in an effort to avoid health consequences. However, we don't yet know the long-term health consequences of e-cigarettes, and gaining that knowledge could take decades. However, a recently published study in mice offers new data for consideration. Is it time to panic? This is Healthcare Triage News. A study released in the beginning of October grabbed some attention in the media. Conducted by researchers at NYU and published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, the study provides some of the first data linking electronic cigarette smoke to lung cancer. The team that conducted the study also published a previous report linking smoke from e-cigarettes to DNA damage in mouse lungs, heart, and bladder, as well as impairments in DNA repair in the lungs. In the current study, the researchers exposed mice to e-cigarette smoke with and without nicotine for four hours a day, five days a week, for 54 weeks. Given the short lifespan of a mouse, the researchers estimate that this is comparable to the amount that a human would be exposed to after vaping for three to six years. Of course, that's a lot of vaping in a short period of time, and how comparable that is to what humans do? Mm. In mice exposed to the e-cigarette smoke with nicotine, 22.5% developed lung adenocarcinomas, a type of lung tumor, compared to none of the mice exposed only to the aerosols and one of the mice exposed only to ambient filtered air. In addition, 57.5% of the experimental mice developed precancerous lesions in the bladder compared to one of the aerosol control mice and none of the filtered air control mice. Of course, we've covered mice and bladder cancer before with respect to artificial sweeteners. Mice seem to get a lot of bladder cancer. Humans, not so much. E-cigarettes are often promoted as a safer alternative to traditional cigarettes because they do not contain tobacco. Burning tobacco gives rise to an estimated 7,000 chemicals, of which at least 250 are known to be harmful and of which at least 70 cause cancer. For example, tar is a component of cigarette smoke that is one of the main culprits in lung and throat cancer in smokers. Other harmful chemicals found in cigarette smoke include arsenic, lead, and carbon monoxide, just to name a few. Additionally, nicotine can be transformed into various nitrosamines during the curing and burning of tobacco, and many nitrosamines are, you guessed it, known carcinogens. When measuring nitrosamine levels in e-cigarette smokers, we find a minuscule fraction of that found in tobacco smokers, leading to the assumption that this transformation of nicotine does not happen when using e-cigarettes, thus supporting the idea that they pose less of a health risk. The prevailing opinion is that nicotine on its own is not a carcinogen, but given that significantly more mice develop tumors in the group given the nicotine aerosol mix, these data suggest otherwise. The authors put forward that nicotine may be converted to nitrosamines once inside cells, where they then stay, eluding current tests for their presence in bodily fluids. Not everyone agrees. A former FDA chief told CNBC in an interview that he does not believe that vape nicotine is a carcinogen, though he does expect that inhalation of these cigarette vapors damages lung tissue and that nicotine is a potential tumor promoter. There are, of course, many caveats to consider. This is only one study, and it was small. Mice are not humans. Their biological responses are not mini versions of human biological responses, and they cannot inhale smoke in the same way humans inhale e-cigarette smoke. As the authors conclude in their paper, these data do not support equating the risk of electronic and tobacco smoking. They simply suggest that the issue warrants in-depth study. It's hard to argue against doing so. Hey, did you like this video? You might enjoy this other video on why the spike in vaping deaths. A good way to support the show is at patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you, like our Surgeon Admiral Sam and our research associate Joe Sevitz, can support the show and help make it bigger and better. 